Rebecca from Chemnitz, and it is time to leave no dye behind. I have some leftovers, which this might be navy or a purple, I'm not sure. I think this might be black. This could be navy or a purple. I definitely have a tiny bit left of extreme blue and some more true black from Dharma. And I want to use all of these to dye some yarn. I think we have a fair amount of color here. So we are gonna dye 300 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. I imagine that whatever I do today, I wanna layer these colors on top of each other. We're probably gonna end up with something that is either a more denim type blue, maybe leaning a little purple, and, or we might get something that is in the navy type realm, but we will see. Right now I'm adding on some removable nylon zip ties onto our dry stroll. Uh, I like to do this as an extra tie, but it also makes it really easy to pick up the yarn from the dye pot during the dyeing without tangling the yarn. So I can always grab it by the ties. If you'd like to learn more about the yarn or other tools and equipment that I use in these videos, I do have affiliate links down in the video description. Today I want to layer the colors and versus mixing them all in at once. So in the pot, I currently have eight cups of water with no acid. And now I am going to, I think each of these containers holds four cups. Whatever this color was, I added about two cups of water to it. And actually that is mostly clean now. Add another approximately two cups to here. And I have no idea if that was purple or navy. And same with this color right here. So while I still want to do layers, uh, I am going to combine this liquid in with this. It looks purple, but it could be navy. Sometimes navy looks a bit purple before it got started. So, oops. although the more I'm looking at it, the more I think that this was actually a purple color. All right, now I'm gonna add the rest of this water. So I'd say we probably have uh, 16 to 20 cups of water in our pot currently. All right, now I am going to come with our dry, Stroll fingering weight yarn. And yeah, this is looking fairly purple to me. Uh, and we are gonna slowly sink this in. All of the tools and equipment in these jars are dedicated for dyeing yarn and are not ever used for the preparation of food. Oh, fun. You know, I'm now thinking that we did have potentially a mixture of navy and purple? I'm not sure. I don't remember what was in <laughs> the jars at all. But one thing with starting with the yarn dry is that it's gonna give us less even coverage of this first color. And I don't believe that there was any acid in with the dye containers themselves, but I could be wrong. I mean, you'll see that some of these pigments are striking to our yarn without uh, any acid in here yet. And so I think that that means that I might start doing the second color. Yeah, in just about a minute. But let me get a container so I can put this yarn in. You can see how this yarn is looking almost dip dyed when really, I mean, I guess it kind of is because we were adding it in slowly, but we've got that first layer and there's not that much pigment. We still have some purple in there, but what I want to do here is I want to move the placement of the zip tie just to the completely other end of the skein. This way, when I add the yarn into the next color, 
we aren't going to just keep the same lightest patch the whole way through. And this is approximate, but we are layering these colors. Today's project is a good example of what I like to call dying by feel because I saw what was happening on this yarn and I'm making my decisions about what to do next and to add the next color cold versus hot based on what we've seen already. And so I'm now going to add a splash of white vinegar and let's go ahead and do all of our black dye. I am assuming that what was left in this container was black and I know that what was left in this container was part of a 2% black stock solution but I don't think I even had 100 milliliters of that. Uh, so now I'm going to go fill up this jar to rinse it out and I'll rinse this container into there. It's very possible that one of those colors was like a leave no dye behind collection from my celebration live stream. Uh, but I have really no idea <laughs> otherwise what colors I have. All right, let's now slowly add our yarn in to this black dye. And again, everything is cold. And while we have some acid here, that doesn't necessarily mean things will strike quickly at all. Ooh, this is really pretty. We may not feel much of that purple left, and I still have blue that I want to add on, but I think what I wanna do for this stage is take this over to the stove and start heating things up. Okay, so I am going to heat this up and I'm, I'm gonna set a timer for uh, 20 minutes. I really like this dusty purple that we have right here uh, from the way that the black and the purple layered on each other. We will be brightening the color. I think there's probably only about 20 milliliters of what I think was extreme blue in the bottle. Yes, it's extreme blue. And so that's not a ton of dye, but it's a very pigmented color. So that should brighten things a bit. But I'll come back in 20 minutes. It has been 20 minutes and the heat is on low. You can see we're nice and steamy, but I am now going to remove the yarn. Oh, this is pretty. And yeah, all of that color is in the yarn, which is great. Things are nice and steamy, and <laughs> I don't think the colors are coming in true. It is a little less, it's more blue than it appears on pers in person right now. <sighs> but I do see some beautiful variation in the tone. Actually, I'm gonna just set this aside. While I try to let that cool for a minute, I am now going to come in and add our extreme blue, and I'm gonna go start rinsing out this bottle. Oh, right, what is in here is not 1% uh, stock solution. It was rinsed. I had already started rinsing the bottle. I forgot, so I have no idea how much there was. There was some dye that was clumped on the bottom of the bottle. But more of that does not seem to be coming out. So I'm going to set this bottle aside to wash. Meanwhile, make sure to stir this up. So yeah, I have a feeling there's a lot less blue in here than even less than what I was thinking. This color is so nice. Now here's some of the fun when it comes to layering colors. I can see that around the zip ties we still have some more pastel areas. And while this yarn is quite warm, I can once again move the zip tie. I'm not moving it all the way down. I'm moving it about, I mean, it's very approximate, about halfway down just to shift, who it's steamy, where the, what part of the yarn is gonna go into the dye first. And all this is gonna help us do is make sure we don't have like a super light patch stuck up here with the tie. And yeah, let's go add it to the pot. There's no reason to wait. Okay, 
there's not a huge amount of water volume in the pot. The heat is actually off. Ooh, that's pretty at the moment. But I'm coming in and adding the color, sort of dipping and stirring as I put it in. Hoo-wee, this is pretty. All right, I'm gonna turn the heat back on. And then actually I'll step in front of the camera to talk about the whys here. But this is really pretty. So why did I decide to layer these colors in three different batches versus adding it all to the pot and adding the yarn at once? And the biggest reason is that this allows me to get more coverage of dye around the yarn. If I had added all the dye to the pot at first and acid, then added the yarn in, I would have had some more saturated sections and less saturated sections. The color might have broken, so we may have seen different hues, but we really would have had more dark and more light. By layering the yarn in three different steps, even with each color getting sort of a dip dyed uneven coverage on the yarn, we're getting more coverage overall. And I think that when we look at the final yarn, it's gonna be beautiful, variegated, but very, very, very subtle. And so we might see a more even saturation across the whole yarn, but then looking at it, there might be more blue or more purple or more navy type patches on it which ultimately is just a different type of colorway. And that's one of the things that I really enjoy playing with here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. So please make sure that you are subscribed and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I may be playing with leftovers today, but we definitely can do this technique, this sort of dying by feel, layering colors one at a time in a pot with more intent and measurements as well. You might find, however, that there will be some differences batch to batch just based on how quickly or slowly you add the yarn into the pot and how much you stir at every step. But it's a technique I really enjoy and I hope you're enjoying the video too. <laughs> it has been 20 minutes and let's check. Yeah, it looks like all of the color has cleared. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn off the heat and leave the yarn in here to cool completely so we can wash it. Let's wash this yarn. There's no color left in the pot, which is great. And ooh, we've got this dark, ooh. Like some parts are like sort of the rich navy and then there's some parts that are purple and some parts that feel gray. This is so pretty. So pretty. All right, I am going to add some dish soap to this and fill the container back up. Okay, and let's see. I'm trying to see if we see any color bleeding. Maybe there, but given how saturated this is, it's not a lot. So what I'm gonna do is rinse this a few more times uh, to get all that soap out because I'm not expecting, yeah, I mean, that's already looking pretty clear. So I'm gonna continue and just finish the rinsing off camera. Then I'm gonna put the yarn through my spin dryer to remove a bunch of the liquid and make the drying process faster and hang it up to dry so then we can come back and see what the yarn looks like. I love the subtlety we got here from layering these leftover colors on more one at a time instead of combining them just all at once. Uh, because you can see that we have some more purple hues, some more gray, some that almost lean a little bit more teal. I honestly don't remember what colors I used for this and layered for this. All I know is that I really like where we ended up. I just absolutely, absolutely love this color. It is so pretty. Man, this is the problem sometimes with Leave No Dye Behind. When you have something that you love so much, and while you feel that you could probably get close, but you don't have a recipe, and you probably, I mean, there's a chance, but I probably can't go and get this exact recipe. But I certainly can recreate this type of effect, and I've dyed 
layered colors like this in the past and I'm very excited to do more of it in the future. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and if you enjoyed this video please make sure you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I love saving leftover dyes to combine all together because I think that the there's often a softness to it. Sometimes I go a little more wild, but a lot of times I get something that feels so soft and effortless. And I just absolutely love how this comes out because I think that there's something about dying by feel and without as much of a plan and being surprised about where you end up that is just so much fun. And so I really hope that you enjoy that as well. If you love the yarn that I dye, most of it ends up in my Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations. There will be a link down below. Uh, in every listing, you can see the title and the date of the video where it was dyed. So you can go back and watch the video. Actually, and all, each skein of yarn will also be labeled with the date the video came out and the title of the video. So you can go find it and watch that video as you are knitting, crocheting, weaving, or doing whatever kind of fiber arts you enjoy with the yarn. So it's a great way to get some pretty yarn and support the content here at the same time. So I encourage you to go and at least check it out. Thank you so much for watching.